Peace, grace, and mercy be multiplied to you from God our Father and from our loving Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Our text begins with these words, Do you not know? Have you never heard? Has it not been from the beginning? Have you not understood how the earth was formed? God is speaking through his prophet Isaiah to his own people Israel some things that should have been obvious to them. These people did not believe in evolution. They did not believe that the earth formed itself and kept it in its own order. They knew and believed that the fool says in his heart there is no God. Why do you complain, Jacob and Israel? Don't you remember the parting of the Red Seas? Don't you remember the way I took you through the wilderness? The manna from heaven? Do you recall the fall of Jericho? God is speaking to his own and not to the enemies of Israel, not to the people who never heard of God before. He is speaking to his own. He who sits enthroned above the circles of the earth and its peoples are like grasshoppers. He stretches out the heavens like a canopy and spreads them like a tent to live in. He brings the princes to naught and reduces the rulers of the world to nothing. No sooner are they planted, no sooner are they sown, no sooner do they take root than he blows on them and they wither and the wind blows them away. They had the teachings of Moses. They knew that God had created the heavens and the earth. Further, they had seen kingdoms rise and fall. They knew that might does not make right. They knew with God all things are possible. Now they whine and they cry, Why do you complain, O Jacob? Why do you say, O Israel, My way is hidden from the Lord. My cause is disregarded by my God. You know, the times have changed since this text was written 2,700 years ago. But people haven't changed. And Christians are people. I think of how right after the Reformation, 500 years ago, which we celebrated last year, how Catholics and Lutherans and Calvinists and the others all believed that the Bible was the inspired, inerrant Word of God. Some of you from a different denomination may remember this song, Faith of Our Fathers Living Still. Well, it ain't. Times have changed, churches have changed. The fathers of the Reformation in many cases would not claim the churches that claim them. If the modern churches, the liberal churches, want to minister to the majority of the people and not just please themselves, they might go back a hundred years and recall what fed the people of God a hundred years ago. But like the people in Isaiah's time, they have forgotten what is good. And I see the same thing in politics. Now, I'm going to put this out as a disclaimer. <laughs> if you are an American first and a party member second, you'll agree with me. If you are a Republican first and an American second or a Democrat first and an American second, you might even want to walk out. <laughs> but maybe the best thing you can do right now is stop your ears. Some of you are old enough to remember JFK and his tax cuts. I remember the ad that was being run in my hometown. It showed a Democratic representative coming home with a big bag of groceries. He set them on the table and he says, this is what the Democrat tax cut will do for you. More food on your table. The Republicans want to take that food from you. Well, what has happened since JFK? If you watch the mass media, you may not know it, if you watch some of the more conservative ones, you will see some people how they have flip-flopped, they forgot to recall what their party stood for a while back. Now it is Republicans offering tax cuts and the Democrats are saying they're only crumbs. 
Now I'm not saying one is right and the other is wrong. I'm saying that both parties have forgotten to look back and see who they were and who they should be. But besides other religions, besides politics, there's you and there's me. Do you not know? Have you never heard the Lord is everlasting, the creator of the ends of the earth? He will not grow weary, and his understanding you will never understand. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. In our moments of grief and discouragement and despair and disappointment, and we all have them at times, what we need to do is to recall that we are Christians and we have a Heavenly Father who watches over us and cares for us. Our memories are short when it comes to recalling what Jesus said, Lo, I am with you always. Or what St. Paul has said, No temptation that has befallen thee will overcome you. God is faithful. He who did not spare his own son will watch over you. With the cross, he will also give you a way to escape. In other words, no temptation, no problem that you will face as a Christian will be too much for you. But like Jacob and Israel, we forget, and then what's the next thing we do? Complain. Where's God? I feel so lonely. God isn't listening to my prayers. God doesn't care. Well, then there's this. What then shall we say? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him all things unto us, will he not give us all things in him? In other words, the very gospel itself is our guarantee, our assurance that God cares for us and will take care of us. As surely as we believe the gospel, so surely should we believe that God is for us and is taking care of us. Believe also this, he gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even the young man will grow tired and the young man will stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar like wings of an eagle. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. So, ever been weak? And are you weak now? Discouraged? Grieving? Feeling lonely? Hurting? Jesus says, come unto me. All you who are weak and heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. What happened last month where several people came together and they didn't wear black, but they may as well have worn black? I turned 80. Oh. <laughs> and I ain't the man I used to be. So I don't expect to run and not grow weary. And I still stumble and fall. However, in looking back, to those times, I can see that there were times when I would not grow weary. There were times when I would not faint. There were times when I would soar like the wings of an eagle. I can remember some of those times so plainly. I'll just share one with you. After two and three quarters years, I was sick of the army, and the army was sick of me. <laughs> <laughs> And I had just spent a very hard winter, and I'm a Florida boy, bivouacking out there in the snow, washing out of a steel pot with half my clothes on and half off, seeing my breath as I would put that water on my body. Got home, took a seven-day vacation leave, went to a very historic city. The spring was just coming out. The trees were in bud and some were in flowers. And I had just eaten the best meal I had ever eaten over there. It was so good I tipped the cook five bucks. 
I went for a little walk and I sat in the church courtyard and they were practicing a hymn that I remembered. And I said, boy, in about two weeks I'll be home going to my home church and I was flying like an eagle. Well, I've had some good times, I've had some bad times, but guess what? I must have gotten through them because, you see me? <laughs> you don't see a stone out there with my name on it. Now admittedly, I need to remember from time to time that God has taken care of me in the past and he'll take care of me now. But let's turn the question over to you. What are those times in your life when you really felt that God was really there with you, that he was helping you, that you could say, praise the Lord. And what were those times when you thought, oh God, where are you? I, where, where's God going? Well, guess what? I was You're sitting where you are right now. And why? Because God pulled you through. If he didn't, we'd be looking at your stone somewhere. Think about this hymn, one of my favorites. Our God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come. Be thou our guide when troubles last in our eternal home, our eternal home. The new Jerusalem where there will be no more aches or pains or crying and God will wipe away every tear from <coughs> our eyes and all the old things that have bothered us will be gone. But we're still here in the meantime and so we'll consider this prayer. Be thou our guide when troubles last. And he will. And how about this prayer? The Lord is my shepherd, and I'm not going to want. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.